Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number 38. This episode is uh, Kristen Bates. Kristen Bates is hilarious. I um, I was unprepared. I was unprepared for the, ma- the amount of laughs uh, that went on in this. And Kristen was actually the first ever uh, uh, audience requested guest, which is pretty cool. So uh, congrats on that. Um, but this was really fun. We uh we talk about her being from New Mexico, and then uh, how everything has to revolve around Breaking Bad. I mean, she didn't say that, but I'm saying that. And uh, uh, we were both band geeks, so we had a lot of really good stories about music and stuff. Um, we we kind of bounce all over the place, which is sort of the best way to get to know someone. I think. Um, she was a barista for a bit, and she could do some of those like uh latte arts, latte art. Latte arts. I don't know. It's really, really cool looking. Um, and she breaks down the process of that because I was genuinely interested. Uh, so we talk about that. We talk about all kinds of stuff. How much of a wimp I am with uh, with hot food. God, I'm so bad. I can't handle anything above pretty much mild. Pretty much mild. I think I could do some medium, but I don't know. Dangerous territory. But at least I'm I'm secure enough in who I am to admit it. Right? Right? Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> we talk about uh, how she met her now fiance, um, and it is one of the best stories I've ever heard, as far as uh, introductions and one-liners leading to uh, well, now an engagement. But Kristen is uh, on the Imperial Senate podcast. She's on Twitter. Highly recommend you uh, you check her out because she's so funny. Uh, but yeah, this was this was a, this was a really good talk. Um, I've started doing the the plugs in the beginning, so do not forget to rate this on iTunes. Assuming you're listening on iTunes, if you're listening on SoundCloud, uh, go to iTunes <laughs> and uh, just five stars, because I've been told that the algorithm works with the stars and not necessarily the reviews. So the reviews are good, and I really really appreciate them. I just read them. You guys are very very kind. Um, but the stars puts us toward the front of iTunes so more people can find the show, the higher ratings, the better guests. Um, it is all kinds of fun stuff like that. And also, being that this was a uh, requested episode, I want to start doing that uh, more as well. So if there's anybody that you guys would like to hear on the show, uh, tweet at me, at Jedi Brian, and um, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. 2018 is going to be a big year, guys. I got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So without further ado, the interesting podcast episode number 38 with the hilarious Kristen Bates. Theme song time. <laughs> Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? Sweet. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Good. It's always nerve-wracking at the beginning of these things because I have to, like, check everything. Yep. And I was like, this, this isn't working. How, how do you do the volume? And is it good? That's Earlier, um, I couldn't, um, like figure out why my microphone wasn't working but oh, no. i forgot to turn on my phantom power i was like oh that makes sense that'll work do you run it through a soundboard uh yeah i do i test it and see that makes sense how it sounds i'm so horrible at all of technology i know but uh same here um but i've learned a lot when i've started podcasting so that's really cool like i thought oh man i'm just probably gonna use like i don't know one of those little apple microphone things sure and then now, like a few months later, I'm like, oh, man, I know what a phantom power thing is. I know what <laughs> all this stuff is. See, I, sh- I should probably be doing that and learning, but uh, I'm dumb. I'm real dumb. 
I, uh, no. I, I like mess with settings for forever. And I was like, why is, okay, so I'm running it through the mic and then I'm doing this and it'll sound fine. And then my computer will be like, just kidding. We're going to reset everything. <laughs> but uh, I think, I think I got it now, which is good. Volumes is like the weirdest thing. It is. To try and get like where either the guest isn't super blown out or I'm not super blown out. And it's such a learning curve. Yeah. And one of the things that I hate the most is like sounding like I'm on the phone. Oh, yeah. Or <laughs> like I hate that. So I try to sound as clear as and as professional as possible. Like fake it till you make it. So Tell I always it. test that out. <laughs> fake it till you make it is how I live my life in every regard. Honestly, it's the best motto. It is, right? Because uh, eventually it'll make it, hopefully. <laughs> eventually, because eventually you'll learn something. You're like, wait a minute. Yes. I'm no longer faking this. I Ho get this. Hopefully. <laughs> best <laughs> best case scenario. I always stay positive. That's right. That's right. So you're in Texas. Yes, currently. What that part? Soon. Really? Yeah, well, I'm going to start graduate school in Boston soon, hopefully. So. Uh, Okay. Yay, more debt. Yeah, whoop, whoop. <laughs> what part of Texas are you in? Uh, Dallas right now. Okay, that is a massive city. It is a massive city. It's the first city I've ever lived in, so it's pretty exciting. Where were you born? Uh, a really small town in New Mexico. It's called Hobbs. Really? It's a very southeast corner. And then about... you just kind of moved over into Texas? Yeah, um, better opportunities. So That makes sense super glad about that i'm i'm glad i made that decision sure because i probably would have still be in hops right now and that'd be really sad uh -huh. How, so you grew up in hops yeah 18 years of my life i grew up there and i graduated high school there and i was like you know what i need something different and so i moved to dallas bigger hats bigger hats that's what <laughs> it was all about <laughs> it got me that's i mean i see the truth in all things that's funny. I've been yeah. all over Texas. I've never been in New Mexico, though. How are um, how are they different? If you go to New Mexico, stay to the northern area, places like Santa Fe, Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Vegas, New Mexico that's really cool. Um, but there's a lot of like uh, cultural things that are really cool there. Uh, Native Americans are really prominent there. Sweet. Um, and Hispanic culture is very big as well. So you get really, really amazing homemade Mexican food. Yeah. Uh, yes, the best I've ever had. Uh, I know New Mexicans are really big on green chili, and we take that very seriously, ride or die. So <laughs> you can have green chili uh, on burgers, um, in soups, really, uh, in burritos, in your cereal. It just green chili. <laughs> green chili. Your cereal. So, yeah. <laughs> I I would expect nothing less. Good. Exactly. Wow. So are, we also are, have like uh, a balloon festival. Really? Like a hot air balloon or like balloon balloon? Yeah. Ooh, no, just a hot air balloon. That'd what? be kind of cool, just balloons. I don't know. Hot air balloon sounds... That's actually on my bucket list to ride a hot air balloon. Oh, have you, cool. Have you ever been in one? I have not been in one, um, uh... and neither have I been to a balloon festival. Oh, yeah. And well, I'm really you know, bummed. That makes both of us. <laughs> oh for 2. Oh for 2. So are you good with spicy food, being that yeah, green chili is a thing? Yeah, I love spicy food. Well, green chili isn't that spicy. Oh. I mean, I guess it depends on the person, but um, I guess you sort of... I mean, it's more so about the flavor right. than it is the spice. So, I mean, you can make them spicy, but if you go to the store, like I'm, uh, I know they sell like canned green chilies mm -hmm. in Texas. Um, but if you go to the store, it'll say things like extra spicy green chili or mild green chili. It's all a lie. Um, <laughs> it's, there's really no spice to it. And each batch of green chilies are different and you don't know what you're going to get. So they are selling you lies that they're selling you a surprise. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. So you could get like, super spicy can and then you could be eating it and you're like, Oh, this isn't spicy at all. I like spicy food. And then you can like eat jalapenos. And you're like, I was wrong. That, <laughs> that is, that is far too much risk for me. <laughs> I, I am a wimp when it comes to spicy food. Really? I oh, am. So, I mean, like acid reflux, yes, but it's also yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if you can survive, me, I'm like, I'll I'll get a nice little mild. You know, I like to be a little crazy sometimes. And <laughs> I went to. I've been watching a whole lot of hot ones. You ever watch that show on YouTube? No, I haven't. What is it? I highly recommend it. It's a oh. it's a show where this guy Sean Evans has celebrities on, and he interviews them, and they eat progressively hotter chicken wings. 
I love it. It's so good. It's and called like Hot Ones. It's called Hot Ones. And it I like love he's it. had like DJ Khaled, Kevin Hart, like big names, Seth Rogen. And like half of them like DJ Khaled only made it like three wings in. And then really? he qu- then he quit, yeah. Oh, I would have expected more from him. Right? I mean, all he does is win. Apparently not at chicken wings. <laughs> And then they had, like, uh, Russell Brand was on there, and he was completely unfazed. Like, all the way to the end, completely oh, unfazed. Oh, I'm not surprised at all. I know. I'm he's He just he just all... reached a higher level of being, and then was like, this is he child's ascended. play. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I watched a whole lot of that, and uh, I was at the bowling alley a while ago, and I was like, you know what? I've been watching a lot of people eat hot wings. I'm feeling hot wings. I'm going to go crazy and do a... I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the hot ones, which is like level three. Yeah, like mild, medium, hot. Mm, and I was yeah. I was with a buddy of mine, and he's like, I usually go with hot. You know, they're not that hot. I'm like, mm, I don't know. This mild gentleman <laughs> myself may uh, may may go for the medium. And he's like, No, no, you gotta go hot. I'm like, All right, cool. I took one bite, and I was like, mm, I think I'm good. I couldn't ha- I couldn't hang. <laughs> Does anybody have some tums? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take a hard pass. Hard pass on the spice. I. I my spice level is pretty high, but I like spiciness for the flavor. I don't like it to be cocky. Sure. So people who eat like ghost peppers and stuff, I'm like, I <laughs> I'm not gonna get with that. Cow. You're a I, monster. <laughs> yes. Eat it for the flavor, not yes. just because you can. Yes. I'm like, I don't want my food to hurt me. Going exactly. Down. You know, if I you don't can... want my poops to burn. Yeah, of course. That that means it burns twice, and that's that's no fun at exactly. all. Exactly. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah. No thanks. I'm not. I'm. I'm man enough to admit that spice is not my thing. And that's okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I think so too. Have you been to Albuquerque? Yes, I have. I, I was really in weird. marching band throughout my high school career, so we'd always oh, go no up to way. Albuquerque for competitions. And then I was in tennis, so we got to do tennis tournaments up there too. So. Loved it. Sweet. I was originally going to go to college in Albuquerque, but luckily, really? yeah, luckily I yeah. <laughs> went to Dallas. So sure. if I went to college in Albuquerque, I probably would be somewhere else, and I don't know. In a meth lab. That's how that yeah. works, right? That's how I think mm-hmm. it works. That's it, how it works. Yeah, like everyone in Albuquerque ends up doing meth, right? No? Well, that, gotta here's be. the thing. It's not far from the truth. Albuquerque <laughs> is very weird um Mm -hmm. if you go just stay towards like the tourism stuff um and university of new mexico is very safe but outside of that it's just very strange like a couple of my friends went to albuquerque for college Mm -hmm. and like within the first few weeks of living there they had their car stolen oh no um but it's like it's so bad up there in albuquerque because like they were kind of expecting that and when it happened they just shrugged it off Oh, of course. <laughs> so there's a yeah, there's a running joke, you know, go to Albuquerque or come to Albuquerque for the balloon festival, stay because your car got stolen. <laughs> yeah, that's that's sort of that should be the motto there, but it's very strange, you know, when you go there you just have to assume everybody you interact with is on meth. Oh, that makes sense. That's great. It's a fun time. Yeah, of course. Keeps you on your toes. Exactly. So you the times that you were there, did they coincide with Breaking Bad? I'm trying to put a timeline uh... here. Because Breaking Bad just turned 10, which is yeah, bonkers. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they might have started to... Well, let's see. It's turning 10. It's 2018. Yeah, so it's I think eight. so. Gotcha. What year, what year did you graduate? 2012. Gotcha. I was in 09. Nice. My yeah. sister was 09. Whoop, whoop. 09, mm. where it's at? Just <laughs> kidding. It can be wherever it is as long as you make it. Uh, So what did you play in band? I played the saxophone. What? Um, I, tenor? Yeah, it's my uh, alto saxophone. But Sweet. I did dabble in tenor for a little bit. And I tried the soprano saxophone. So You ever tried baritone? Uh, no, that thing was heavier than I was at the yep. time. <laughs> but I played the bassoon once, and I absolutely hated it. What? I tried the bassoon once, the double reed. I was like, mm. how does anyone make music with this thing? It's it's fun once you learn how to fix your embouchure for it. Sure. But... Like the notes that you had to memorize, it was down a couple of uh, like octaves, and so mm-hmm. I had to relearn um, how to play it, and I was not here for it. Yeah. <laughs> how long did you play saxophone for? Uh, since about sixth grade, so a long ass time. Sweet. Do you still play or no? 
Well, I haven't played since I went to college, Mm -hmm. but um, I was cleaning out my closet the other day, and I still have my saxophone, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, I need to get back into it because I miss it so much. I'm with you there. I uh, I played trombone for seven years and uh, absolutely loved it. I own three, and every now and then I'll look at them, and I'm like, "Mm, one day. Do you have the one that has the valve so you don't have to go all the way out for, like, the seventh position? No. I always thought that was the coolest thing ever. And um, I've got, like, short arms, which Mm -hmm. isn't great when you have a trombone. So what I would have to do is, like, get to sixth position and then turn my head to the right to reach Mm. seventh. So it looks like I'm doing a sweet little boom move. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. Like a trombone dab. Exactly. Exactly. Like, oh, that, that one's got style when in reality I have short arms. (laughs) <laughs> make it till you make it that's what i'm saying that's right you know i do- wanted to play the trombone yeah my what? dad played it really but yeah uh he let me use his um before i did like tryouts uh-huh. and he was like there's no way because i was still i didn't hit puberty until i was like 16 or 17 i hear you so late bloomer um and so i wasn't growing and so i couldn't even get to like the fifth position Right. And my dad was like, yeah, no way. There's no way that's going to happen. Yeah. So I was super <laughs> bummed out. But luckily, I you know, picked the most expensive instrument there was. Yeah, of course. Uh, such is my luck. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I really enjoyed it. That's awesome. Did you play? So I'm assuming you played in the marching band, you said. So you also played symphonic? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Uh, did you do marching band as well? I did. I yeah. love it. It's the that's greatest the thing like ever. Absolutely. We, where where I went, I went to Naples High in South Florida, and we had like this record in Florida of thirty five years of straight superiors. Yes. And uh, so it was like a prestige thing as well. And God, it, I love band. What love was the so favorite much. show that you marched in? Ooh. Okay. Um, my freshman year, we did an eighties. We did an 80s one, and it was amazing, and my, so I would say the 80s is probably the best show we ever did, but my, it was either my sophomore or junior year, the team, the Naples High football team went to States, so we got Uh to march in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Oh, that's so cool. So that was, that was really, really cool. So either of those two. How about you? Um, well, my freshman year, so when marching, when we did marching again in Hobbs, Mm Mm-hmm. Actually, when we did school in general in Hobbs, it was really weird. Uh, first <laughs> There's balloons. Through sixth, yeah, yeah, we got balloons. Um, kindergarten through sixth grade was elementary school. And then really? seventh and eighth grade was middle school. And then ninth grade was in its own little dimension. And then you had 10th through 12th grade as high school. Weird. Yeah, super weird. They, ju- they changed it right after I graduated <laughs> uh, to where it's like with everybody else. Um, but when I was in ninth grade... You couldn't be in marching band until you were in 10th grade. But I got to be a substitute because of my amazing skills. And yeah. I guess someone else had to go visit their grandmother or whatever. But my 9th grade year, they did uh, a Rocky show. Ooh. Where, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Um, and they played all the songs from Rocky. Um, we even built our own boxing pit. What? Um, oh, yeah. It was so cool. Um, there were Around that time, it was considered cool if you were in choir and in marching band oh, so we sweet. had a few people um that were in choir that sang sort of like the opening uh to the first rocky movie and then we transitioned um into the theme and that was really cool that was probably one of my favorites because when we went to competition it started to rain oh sweet. And usually when it rains you know the band has to stop playing but we were so in it that we kept on playing in the rain and everybody just decided to stay in the stadium and they're like yeah this is great that so is awesome that was my favorite that's a good one that's a good one we did you i'm assuming you had a dance break yes actually we did same now that i think about it same our dance break was in thriller yeah for the 80s show we did uh you can call me al which mm. is a favorite uh we did play centerfold and then I feel like, oh, the the slow song, the ballad we did was, um, oh, what is it? It's the Journey song. Um, I'm losing it. I think it's one, one, one day something forever. Nope, that's Rod Stewart. Mm, I'm gonna butcher it. I'm but to think of uh, it's something. Don't stop believing. There yeah, wasn't that one. It was another um, one. Open arms. That's open arms. There we go. Open arms. I had the melody in my head. Yeah, same. I was like whistling it, and I'm like, oh. There's the chorus. Yeah, open arms. 
And it was great. Were you like really, really into music? Like played it a ton? Were you one of those? Because I, def- um, I definitely I was. I was really into jazz music. Same. Jazz um, music is so hard. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's like, and... take, take everything you know and forget about it. Mm-hmm. Including the oh, way you when count. When some notes, this is hard. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's just a blank section that says saxophone for 16 <laughs> measures. And yes, but... and they're like, okay, well, here's the key. Here are the majors. You can play whatever note you want to, but it has to be within that. And it... then you're like, ugh. Exactly. This is your scale you can choose from. Pick these notes and just go for it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do with this freedom. Yeah, same, same. I did two but... years of jazz. Like oh, my, nice. my my last two years. So I did symphonic from sixth grade until uh, senior year. And then I did marching band ninth through 12th. And then 11th and 12th was jazz. So you got nice. like four years of prior music, four or five years. And then they're like, just kidding. Here's how you count three, four time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. It was, Go back. Yeah, there was a learning curve. There was there was a de- steep, steep learning curve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel you on that. But you I, like uh... jazz? There was um, this really cool band I got to be in. It was like the best of the best of our high school band. It was called Taskervich Band. That's awesome. And it was named after, after Ralph Tasker, who was a basketball coach for our team. Aha. Uh-huh. And he's a huge, apparently he's a huge, like big deal within the NFL. He knows a lot of like NFL coaches and things like that. And he passed away a long time ago. Oh no. So like there's a, our basketball arena is named after him. And then our jazz band is named after him. So we would play like, uh, the best of the best. We would play, you can call me out. Yeah. Um, you like, we played centerfold. We played, um, pick up the pieces. We played, uh, just like a bunch of stuff. And it was a lot of fun because it was like a small group of us, maybe like 10 or 15 of us. Sure. And it was a lot of fun. Um, we did not take the best care of our instruments because we'd always go and get snacks. And one of the things that we covet during basketball season is uh, hot Cheetos with nacho cheese poured over them. Oh, good stuff. Oh, man, it's amazing. So we'd be eating that. And then I'd, I remember having like hot Cheeto stuff all over my reed. It was beautiful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, jazz music. I think if I remember, uh, I hated symphony season i absolutely hated concert season um just because i was i liked more like the upbeat type stuff Mm -hmm. um and i hated hated concert season but i trudged (laughs) through i got through it there you go there you go that's when uh, i was never first chair but that's okay that's when you have to go to like uh competitions and you do Mm -hmm. i forget what they're called but like you go sit in a room in front of judges yeah. I never practiced for that. I loved going <laughs> because even if you didn't get it, you could still stay that entire day and just goof around. Oh yeah. So I would never rehearse. I was like, whatever. I don't this isn't that important to me. You're like, I'll figure it out. Mm, whatever. That's fine. I was that guy who uh oh, that was another one that we played uh my freshman year was Enter Sandman. Yeah. Enter Sandman by Metallica. And it was my favorite song because it was so difficult to play on trombone. And mm-hmm. our part was like the badass cool parts. And I would play it so much with uh, my best friend who played baritone that we one day we had a substitute. And we th- when you have a substitute, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm just not going to do anything today. Well, we love playing music so much, we just grabbed our instruments and started playing them. And it was always Inter Sandman. And the class like got together when the substitute was out and locked us in the closet, like the <laughs> band closets, which... Yes. Jokes on them. Uh, you can still play a baritone in a closet, so mm-hmm. you just hear Inter Sandman played on a baritone from the closet next to me, and me just like saying the notes with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a muffled baritone sound. Yeah, and then just some guy going. Bah, 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 bah. It was awful. Yes. So I'm really uh, cool, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, hey, anybody who's <laughs> been in marching band is cool in my book. I agree. It's the best thing in the world. Do you, have you ever heard of Young Blood Brass Band? Uh, it sounds familiar. I highly recommend you check them out, especially if you like jazz. But they're like a new age sort of jazz where there's Mm. a guy who's like rapping over these instruments. And it's it's basically all improv. Like if you listen to the same song, different recordings, there'll always be different notes throughout. Uh Um, But there's a dude that like plays a tuba in it. And he beatboxes into the tuba while playing it. Shut up. It's insane. Like, there's noises that he can make with his instrument that I've never even heard before. Oh, my gosh. What's it called in Young Blood Brass? Young Blood Brass Band. 
Ooh, it's yes. Find me so up. good. They have a song called Brooklyn, which is tops. It's amazing. I'm looking them up right now. Yeah, highly, it's... highly recommend them if you're into that kind of stuff, which obviously you are. They're really Obs. good. Obs. Yeah, it was so good. I remember in jazz band we did um, Truly mm-hmm. by Lionel Richie. Yeah, that was, that's a good great, song. Great, great song. Um, very, very, very difficult to play on the trombone. Because mm-hmm. like all the solos were trombone, and it's like two octaves high. Oh, it was, it was difficult. Oh yeah, it was difficult. Ooh yeah, ooh yeah. One of my favorite bands, Chicago, um, especially the earlier stuff, has like a lot of trombone and trumpet type stuff, and I love it. It's my favorite. It's so good. Do you uh do you play any other instruments besides the alto sax? You said you tried nope. the others. Mm-mm-mm. Nope, I am That's only fair. akin to alto sax. I'd like to learn more. But... Sure. I'm also lazy. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is an undertaking to learn an instrument. Mm-hmm. It really is. Well, I would argue that the saxophone is probably the easiest instrument to play. That's why it's so expensive. Really? Um, I mean, it's it's really easy. You got like probably like 10 keys and mm. or and it's just really simple. Like there's not you don't have to like with tr- uh, trumpet if you want to sound more sharp or flat you have to change your embouchure yes with saxophone you don't have to do that huh you just pull so out the tuning slide yeah you Got don't it. have to pull out the tuning slide. Oh, yeah you don't even have to do that really I mean, you might have to pull out your mouthpiece just a tad oh yeah yeah, yeah. i forgot you got that little neck thing mm-hmm. going on oh that, but that's it like there's no i mean there's no double read yeah exactly. um, <laughs> the, tr- oboe is just a horribly made instrument mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like who thought of this I know. Oh, it sounds so <laughs> bad, too. Like, there was always uh, an oboe player in our high school concert band, but it just was horrible because nobody knew how to play it correctly. Of course. And, ugh, like, it just sounded so bad. <laughs> if you're not playing a Snake Charmer theme, you get out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing this. Not this year. I refuse. I could never do reeded instruments. I tried several times. Like, the whole tuck your bottom lip in and then kind of bite down on the top. Mm-hmm. Couldn't do it. I don't know why. Because I can play almost any brass instrument. Trumpet was a little difficult. French horn was hard because it's like a cone. Mm. But I could play like all the trombones, baritones. I played tuba for a while because I broke my arm. Mm. Did you march with a tuba? No, it was bigger than I was at the time. (laughs) (laughs) So I feel your pain. Those marching tubas are hard. Yeah, it was awful. And I I did it, luckily I did it during concert season. And um, Mm. I could like sit it on the chair and kind of lean it against me and then mm-hmm. reach my broken arm around it to reach the valves. <laughs> so is I was that guy. <laughs> hey, no shame, no shame. Right? I love I love instruments though. I th- I like I like music. Music's good. And I miss marching band. I miss jazz band. Right? Right? Is is saxophone your favorite instrument? Yeah, it is my favorite instrument. I mean, I'm a little biased. Yeah, like, of course. Every time there's a saxophone solo in a song, I download it. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I'm like, oh my god, I feel so represented. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I would saxophone and uh, trombone. Um, I I <laughs> bonus like, points. Yeah, points. <laughs> I like the trumpet, but I can't like the trumpet because everyone who plays trumpets are kind of douchebags and. Yep. Which is funny because my best friend, she was in marching band and she played the trumpet, um, and so it's it's just really it's just really funny. But it, it sometimes I like the trumpet, but other times I'm like, oh, these guys are so annoying. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll project my annoyances on trumpet solos. I'm like, no, I can't do it. That's fair. That's fair. It's it's a, it's a thing. I'm with you. It's funny how that translates because even like you're in New Mexico, I'm in Florida, and the trumpet sections are the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I didn't realize that until I think um, I was a drum major my senior year, and what? we like went. To, yeah, it was a lot of fun. One of my favorite experiences. What? And we went to Texas Tech for like this drum major camp thing, mm-hmm. and uh, I was with a bunch of drum majors from like people all the way out in Alabama and all the way out in like California, mm-hmm. and they all said the same thing: like they hated trumpets. <laughs> and so I just it was it warmed my heart so much. I'm like, oh, I'm a horrible person, but I'm not alone. Sure. <laughs> well, so what was that like being drum major? Did you have the baton that you could swing around and do cool stuff with? 
Yeah, I did. It, but it wasn't a baton. It was like this huge staff. Yeah, it's like a ball on the top, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got to learn really cool tricks with that when we would do like parades and stuff. Sure. Um, but I was the fun drum major because it, you know, it was my senior year of high school. All I wanted to do was goof around. Sure. So, um, like I just goofed around with, with 300 students and it was a lot of fun. That is amazing. That's a massive band. You had 300? Yeah. Uh, so, and that was, that was the first year. Okay. My senior year was the first year we included ninth graders. into the Oh, band. gotcha. And so it went from like. I don't know, like a hundred and something to over 300. Mm-hmm. Um, but it started to wane out a little bit over the year because people will get really excited and they'll put a little too much into it. And then throughout band camp, they'll kind of be like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And then they'll drop out. Sure. So I think we ended up with 294, if I remember correctly, um, marching students. But a lot of them were ninth graders. And so I remembered being a ninth grader in band and being very intimidating or intimidated because a lot of, you know, the, the head honcho, um, band students would like, you know, pick on me and like, Oh, you're young, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, um, before the ninth graders came in, I remember pulling all of the junior and senior, uh, marching students that were going to be junior and seniors that year. I told them, I said, if, if you, do this to the ninth grade students, I'm going to make you run so hard that I'm going to throw up. And when I throw up, you can stop. That is amazing. Well done. It was a lot. Well done. We had to, I remember, I'll never, band camp is the hardest two weeks of all of marching band, in my opinion. Yes. Because, like, I remember coming home after the first week and talking to my parents. Mind you, I'd been playing the trombone for three years at this point. And mm-hmm. I was like, I don't, I don't think I can do it. And like what? I was like, no, for real. Like I play, I'm tiny. I'm playing trombone. I can't march and play music at the same time. It's just not possible. They keep telling me to lift it up, and my arms don't reach. <laughs> and then I remember my band director, uh, who became like a really close mentor later on. He was like, no, 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 you you can do it. Just trust me. You make it past these two weeks, and you can do the four years. I'm like, all right, we'll see what happens. And uh, he was right. Mm-hmm. He was mm-hmm. right. It's so it's it, so difficult. <laughs> band camp makes a man out of you. That's right. That's right. It gives you some chest hair. You know, I remember seeing my first bits of chest hair. I was like, wow, I really made it. I yeah, it. that's when you knew. That's when you knew. That's when you knew. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Speaking of that, really funny, awkward story. So uh, I remember being a freshman and seeing these seniors and their leg hair was different. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. like post puberty, it's it's very different. And I remember at band camp, like while doing push ups, looking at the section, I was like, what is happening there? <laughs> this weird moment yep. of noticing different leg hair than what I had at the time. So strange. Mm-hmm. So strange. But band, yeah. band is great. It's great. I'd recommend it to anybody. For sure. Like, if I ever have kids, they're they're learning an instrument. They don't have a choice. <laughs> but but they'll be so willing because they'll be so excited. Right. So, I mean, there's really no conversation there. So you, uh, so you said your dad played trombone and you were too mm-hmm. tiny to play that. Was your mm-hmm. next choice saxophone, or did you kind of go down the line until you found one that you liked? Um, well, my next choice was I didn't know. Right. Um, and I remember in like the first few weeks of sixth grade, the high school marching, ba- the high school band director came down, and he had a sample of instruments to choose from. Oh. And so I rolled the trombone out because I'm tiny. You can't reach. <laughs> can't reach. I'm I'm a little weakling, and I thought, well, screw it. I'll just play the flute because my mom played the flute and my sister played the flute. Um, oh. But I couldn't get a sound out of the mouthpiece because you had to like have your mouth in a weird way. Um, it was really weird, and I right. couldn't do it. I was like, screw this. Um, and I couldn't do clarinet because with saxophone, like your embouchure, yes, you have to tuck your um, lip over your teeth. Uh-huh. But with the with the clarinet, um, the mouthpiece you had to have it towards the roof of your mouth, and then you had to like angle your teeth in a way. It was really weird. Weird. I was like, I'm not doing that much work. Um, and then I tried the drums, and I couldn't keep rhythm really well. Um, 
But, I mean, in actuality, I was a sixth grade kid. No one could keep rhythm well. Yeah, of course. And then I think that's when I found the saxophone. I could make a sound, and it was a strong sound. So I thought, oh, if I'm already pretty good at this, I won't have to work as hard. Aha. Uh-huh. The instrument so chose you. Amazing. <laughs> that is The instrument amazing. chose me. That's right. It's it's like your wand. Yes. That's oh amazing. My gosh, yes. That is amazing. So what did you... So you said you're headed for your master's degree. Mm-hmm. One, that's bonkers. Two, what'd you go to school for? Um, so I originally wanted to go into nursing. Really? So I went to a community college that had a really good nursing program there. I went through the core classes. Um, I took the nursing exam. I got a perfect score on the nursing test, but right I didn't on. get into nursing school because of my grades. Like they were B's and C's and they wanted all A's. And I was yep. like, Screw this. <laughs> um, and then I changed my major I was like, well, I already have all of these science classes, so I'm just going to finish out with a biology major. Oh, okay. Uh, Except I flunked my semester uh, with my biology major. Oh. Um, I failed physics and chemistry and a couple of other classes. That's fair. I would fail them as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was put on academic probation. (laughs) Um, So that was fun, getting that email a few weeks before class started, because I never never checked my, um, like, school email during like breaks Mm -hmm. and I should have and so I checked it like a few weeks before classes started and I was like you need to make this appointment with your with a counselor a probation counselor otherwise you won't be eligible to take classes at UTD and I was like ooh crap (laughs) so (laughs) yeah and I knew I had failed because I stopped going to class um until finals like with chemistry and physics it was like a, a 400 student class or 200 like one of those big classes yeah and i couldn't get chemistry so i stopped going and i only went during tests and my first day in physics class the teacher said only four of you guys will pass this class wow and i was like well, i already know it's not me so peace. <laughs> <laughs> and i just showed up during finals and i just completely failed um so i changed my major again and i and i like kind of had to sit down with myself and say okay what do I really want to do? And so I knew I really enjoyed writing. And so there was a literature studies program at my, at the university I was going to. So I changed it to that and I stuck with it because I really enjoyed it. Um, And so I ended with my bachelor's in literature studies and I'm pursuing a master's in journalism. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of people who take, uh, who, I guess have this bachelor's degree they either go into teaching or journalism or Mm -hmm. um writing um so yeah i really enjoy telling stories that's awesome Mm -hmm. so what is it that you what is the job that you want to get through journalism oh man i would love to interview celebrities yeah like for Um, like like you see in the junkets yeah i would really love that like um you know, obviously the dream job is to work for Lucasfilm. For sure. Um, for sure, obviously. Obvious. Um, obviously. Obvs. Obvs. Um, and so I'd love to write stuff for them and interview, like, directors and mm-hmm. celebrities and things like that. But also I'm a huge, like, Marvel and DC fan and, um, you know, the fantasy movies and things like that. So if I worked for Marvel or just um, a popular... Um, interview celebrity company in general mm-hmm. um to where i could like interview people i admire that'd be so cool um also i really want to work at a late night show oh and I yeah think that's, well that's like my goal because i really love conan conan's um, great conan's my fave i watched him since the beginning og fan um og conan og conan um or like stephen colbert that'd be really cool i don't know how i'd get in there with the masters in journalism but i'll figure it out yeah of course where well, there's a will there's a way true true that's, so that's cool that's what i want to do i like or um like traveling and like i really love photography so photojournalism sounds interesting too just kind of traveling documenting things um i'm really into cults and murders all right so yeah yeah i live about two hours away from waco Oh, okay. Um, Ranch Davidians. So I, I'm gonna take a trip up there one day and like take a bunch of pictures of where it all went down. So that's pretty exciting. Right on. I did a but movie once to... with the guy who was in um, the the hitchhiker from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ooh. 
So Whoa. that yeah, so that was a thing that that happened. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. How did that go? It, really good, really good. He's hilarious. And uh, something about that movie that I didn't know was I asked him I was like, how long did production run? You know, because this movie came out in like the seventies, I think. And uh, he said it's hard to tell because while they were filming it, they kept running out of money, so they would mm. stop for like two weeks and then pick back up when they got money and film some more and then stop and then pick back up. Interesting. Yeah, it was very strange. He was the crazy guy who like got who cut his hand and like wiped it on the van. Ooh, that. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, his name's Ed Neal. Really, really, he's hilarious. Like in you know, between takes, we're just laughing and joking. I figured with most people that do horror films, like I feel like they have to have a sense of humor. Right, right. I feel like they have to be funny. Yeah, if not, it's, it'd be real weird, real fast. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Uh. Bill Skarsgård? Yeah, Pennywise. Bit, like, they would always crack up on set and joke and things like that. And, you know, he would always have, like, a sense of humor. And apparently, like, the kids in the show or in the movie, like, would have a sense of humor and they would laugh and joke. And, I mean, me as a kid, if I were acting in this, I would be traumatized. Same. But they were like, yeah, whatever, this is fine. Man. Sure. It's a, it's, like, a, it's a very different feeling on set. Okay. Like, I think about... uh. I think it was Before I Wake was the movie with Jacob Tremblay. He's like the little eight-year-old from uh, Room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in this horror movie. I'm pretty sure it was Before I Wake. And he couldn't go to the premiere because the movie scared him too much. But he's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because when you film it, like, it's not scary at all. Like, it's you've got, like, it's not you in a room being chased by something. It's you surrounded by, like, 30 people and a camera crew and a director and a ton of lights. Mm. And that then they sense. do, and like obviously there's no music, and music is half of horror. True, uh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's a real interesting experience how the sausage is made when it comes to how movies. The sausage is made, I love it. Right, right. And and you've done a few um, films as well. I've done a couple things. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I'm up to three, three or four features, five or six okay. short films, couple commercials. I'm uh, I want to be in Star Wars. And by that I mean I'm I'm gonna be in Star Wars. Like you I, are gonna be in Star like Wars. Like hundred percent. You speak it into existence, it will happen. Exactly. Okay. I I started acting when Disney bought Lucasfilm because mm. I was like they're gonna start making Star Wars movies and I'm gonna be in one. So in order mm-hmm. to do that, I have to become an actor first. Uh, I so, mean they have so at did. least ten more years of <laughs> right? Star Wars stuff. So. Right. And I mean like really you have a great shot. I mean Kelly Marie Tran, she didn't have. No. Um, a whole bucket of acting nope. in her back pocket. She was relatively new. God, so. I love her. Oh my gosh, I love her too. She she's is so a gem. Like, that's that's gonna be me when she's like shows up and just starts crying on the red carpet. Mm-hmm. I'm like relatable. Mm-hmm. Yep, that right there. Oh, maybe I'll get to interview you one day. I'm like, hey. You will. You know, know what? I'm gonna request you. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you you said you uh, you got into photography. Mm-hmm. Was that something that you always were interested in or something you came up with like later on? Like was it um, anything that you were like, wow, I really love this thing after trying it out? Well, I liked taking pictures ever since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the idea of like just snapping a moment of something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't really evolve into full-blown photography until I started going to college and You know, I started studying it a little bit more. Like, I didn't take any classes. Right. Um, And I barely got my first DSLR camera, um, like, last year. So, for the most part, it was just my iPhone or a point-and-shoot camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, then I really realized about through, halfway through my college career, like, I really enjoy this. This is, you know, something that I, I feel like I'm really good at. Right. Um, you know, I could be terrible. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. And so I <laughs> art is art. Researching. Yeah, you know, art is art. It's my art. Yes, of course. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Snaps. That's right. <laughs> um, and I really love taking pictures of, like, you know, it, not, like, people smiling, I guess, but taking pictures in the moment. Sure. And, like, a lot of, like, landscapes, too. Sure. So I, like, started watching YouTube videos on how to... Um, use a digital, like a DSL camera well. Sure. 
So I've been practicing that and working hard on that. And then also a friend of mine inspired me because he graduated from high school. He didn't really go to college. He just focused on his photography and he's doing all of this cool stuff. And I was like, wow, you're doing it, man. You're doing it. Sure. Especially with the internet now. I mean, it opened the world. It's nuts mm-hmm. what you can do, specifically in oh. something like photography and the arts. What yeah, ki- that's true. What kind of DSLR did you have? have? I have a Canon Rebel. Oh, really? What kind? Uh, T16. That is awesome. I I owned uh, a media company a few years back, and we shot everything on the T2i. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I know that camera well. We used to shoot weddings, and we did commercials. We had a TV show that I produced once. Uh, oh, so we got a lot of that's got so a lot cool. of work. Yeah. What was the TV show? It was called Lions Den. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't great. wasn't Wasn't great. <laughs> Uh, hey, but you, did it. you produced it and that's, you did it. That's exactly. Awesome. And we ran it for 10 episodes and then I canceled it. Um, so that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it aired. It actually like was on TV every Saturday night at 10. Wow. Which is kind of neat. But yeah, the whole thing was shot on a T2i. And I had like two box lights. And then edited it together to like, I think it was 28, it had to be 28 minutes and 30 seconds to account for the limited commercials. And then I would mm. send it into the studio and then they would air it. That is so cool. Yeah, like, it was, who cares it was learning. if the show like wasn't that great or whatever? Like, you can say that you've had a show. Yes. On TV. And that was why and, I like, did it. <laughs> yeah, and what? no one else can fight you on it. That's right. Look, this like, is where I'm at. A hundred percent. It was. It was a. It was. There was this local band. It was these four members, and they were in like a hip hop group. And what they would do is, each one of them would pick a music video, and then they would review it. And that was mm. the show. So they'd be like, I got this video, and then they would talk about it and what they thought and blah, blah, blah. And, like, that was literally it. Um, But it was an interest. It was definitely a learning experience. Um, But what happened was the band ended up breaking up, and they didn't tell me. Oh, no. And uh, one of the last episodes, they were like, hey, uh, so we're just letting you know that two of the guys aren't going to be here, but we have two of our friends coming up, and, like, they'll fill in. I was like, I don't think so. And it it ended pretty bad. I was like, that's not how this works. But, you know, like I said, I produced a show. I produced a show, which is cool. Exactly. It was very strange. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was a a learning experience. That's for sure. Um, But so, okay, so you did the point shoot. You had that. So all your photography has been digital. Yes. Okay. That that makes sense because I was going to ask about dark rooms and stuff. Never been in one. Have you? I, I, mm, Yes and no. <laughs> it was like a half dark room. It was really weird. It was a semi dark room. It was a semi dark room. <laughs> um, I didn't get to see any pictures be developed, but I got to be, be like in one and look at them. Like, oh, this is cool. Oh, that counts. Um, yeah, I was taking some college classes while I was in high school, and mm-hmm. so they had like a, a a dark room area for photography majors, and so I got to be in it for like a hot second. And I was like, oh no, I'm gonna get the class. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty but, cool though. Yeah, I thought it would always be cool to do that, to, like, develop pictures that way. Sure. Um, but retro cameras are so expensive. Mm-hmm. Film is super Film, expensive. Yeah, Film is hella expensive. For sure. So I've seen online you post a lot of pictures of, like, coffees and arts and whatever they're called. Are you a barista, or is that coffees I, that you get? I was a barista, yeah, for a few years. Um, really? Yeah, I worked at a pie shop. And, what? Uh, oh, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, I would, uh, do the latte art. Um, I would make fancy espressos. I can tell you the difference between a cappuccino and a cortado and a macchiato. I don't know what um, any of those are. <laughs> they're, they're delicious. That's what they are. Um, and, uh, so we were the only pie shop that had an espresso machine in it. Sadly, it is gone now. Um, I no longer work there, but um, you I took it back. with you, is what you're saying. I took it with me, actually. <laughs> and I stole it last day. Me working there, I stole it. There you go. Um, Worth it. But we, um, I just remembered being trained as a barista, and like we were very serious about it. Like we had great coffee beans. Um, like the roaster who supplied our coffee um, took roasting coffee very seriously, and I learned the process of that. Really. And I was trained how to do latte art and when you first do latte art it's terrible <laughs> is that what it's it called it's called like latte blob. art mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay 
Um, it's either a blob or a penis. Of course. No <laughs> um, <laughs> and then as you get better, obviously it starts to look like the uh, a more chick defined chick penis. penis. Oh, mm-hmm. a more refined penis. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's a vein. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. I really loved making the latte art, and when it turned out really well, like, you know, giving it to the customers, and they're like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Magic. So uh, what, that that blows my mind, because you're pouring something into something else, and it makes art. How exactly does that work? Explain the, explain this to me. Okay. I'm looking at it. I've seen the weird-looking flower thing. It's been a hot minute. It okay. Ha- okay. <laughs> so... It all starts with the espresso. Okay. Um, you have to measure it right, um, and you have to make sure the temperature is just right, and you have to make sure it sits, um, like the water sits in the espresso long enough before it starts pouring out um, mm. into the cup. So there's this top part of the espresso that's called the crema. Crema. Got it. Yes. And it has to be like our crema. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it has to if be. If you're fancy. Like, if you're fancy. Um, and it has to be like this light brown color in order for it to really work. Really? And so, yes. So that's one of the proponents of that. And then what you do is you have to steam the milk perfectly. Like those little steam ones that you see. Um, like if yes. you go to Starbucks or like a really fancy espresso place. Um, what you do is, and it works best with whole milk. A lot of people like to get skim milk or coconut milk. Um which, by the way, soy milk is a lot more fattening and a lot worse for your body than whole milk. Just get them. Ooh. I know. I uh, Everyone coming in with their yoga pants going, soy milk? Like, no. <laughs> no. You know not unless, what you do, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're lactose intolerant, then you have no choice. Yes, of course. But with whole milk, you pour, you fill, about the, you fill the pitcher about halfway. And usually if somebody orders like a cortado, a macchiato, or a cappuccino, you have a smaller pitcher. And so I'll explain the differences later. Yes, of course. Um, But with the steam wand, um, you barely want to put the tip of it, just the tip, um, (laughs) into uh, the milk. And then you'll start to steam it for a little bit. And then uh, after about a few seconds, you'll submerge the wand entirely into the milk. And so that sort of um, steams it, obviously, but it creates like a thickness that you'll need later on when you pour the latte art. Mm-hmm. So when you finally get to pouring the latte art, you have to tip the cup towards its diagonal. Okay. And you have to pour uh, the steamed milk directly into the middle of the espresso to create kind of like a layer to where you can set that steamed milk on top of it. So mm-hmm. once you get like a good layer going, um, then you um, get the pitcher closer to the espresso. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you start to wiggle it to get that uh, sort of leaf design going. Right. Um, and then uh, you wiggle it towards like the tip of the cup, and then you just pour straight down the middle to sort of make that cute little shape. That is bonkers. So there's like a so half of that system is just preparation. Mm-hmm. And you got to make sure it's prepped right. If you um over steam the milk it'll be too frothy to do anything if you under steam it it'll be too liquidy to do anything wow so it's it's all about steaming it just right so and those aprons sure. are actually lab coats mm-hmm. yep a lot of chemistry involved. <laughs> and you failed chemistry who'd have thought who'd have thought wow that's Screw right you, chemistry teacher look at me now yeah take that you can just just when your chemistry teacher comes in you make her a penis shape you're welcome mm. <laughs> Drink this. That's okay. right. Sweet, sweet revenge. <laughs> Literally, because it's yes. it's the drink. That's cool. So, what's the most difficult shape you ever made? Um. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, there's a weird thing you can do with latte art, mm-hmm. where um, you can it becomes a challenge. It looks crappy because okay. there's too much going on, but it's the it's the principle of it. Like, uh, there would always, like, there's a secret niche, like, in coffee shops. It's like a secret club where we always do latte throwdowns where whoever can yes. like, the best art and stuff. It's, it's like a secret club. First it's rule really of cool. latte club is you don't talk about latte club. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. This is a safe space. <laughs> so safe here. Um, 
but one of the hardest ones, so um, that sort of like traditional latte art design that you get that kind of looks like the leaf, mm -hmm. um, there's a way where you can do about two or three of those in the same cup. What? Mm-hmm. And it's all about like, then it becomes a portion thing, like how much espresso do you pour, how much steamed milk do you make, um, and how much of it uh, do you put on the base? Because if you put too much, then the latte art's going to overflow, and it's going to break the tension oh. um, espresso, and it's going to look your cup overflow with. Of course, so, of course, in a yes. bad way. <laughs> in a bad way. Um, you'd be shunned from the coffee community. Yeah, that's when so it's like I, they I just rip your apron off. You're like, yep. you're out of here. It's like Chef Ramsay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Will's Kitchen, just taking it off and, like, shoving it on a little hook. That's right. Put two Get pieces of bread on the side of your face. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> exactly. Gold. Yes. That is nuts. So, did you did you do the three leaves? Did no, you Did you I, complete the three leaf challenge, Kristen? I, I didn't. You, I left before I, I could do it. You've I been just, found wanting. I was unworthy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I had to take my hat out of the ring sorry right. boss i can't do this i'm that, a failure that's why you took the machine you're that's like if i can't machine. do it no one can exactly i respect no that i respect that did you ever make a swan because swans are pretty popular swans are popular they're hard af so that's, i didn't get i can imagine that. i did the leaf and i did the heart Ooh, that's pretty good that's pretty so good. that was that I, was the i don't even know what those drinks are to say that i've done anything with them so explain explain to me what these drinks are. Cappuccino okay. is is coffee. So a, I sound so I'll, dumb. I'll start with, <laughs> no, you are per you are perfectly fine. It's a it's like a coffee community um, elitist thing. Um, so okay. you're fine. Yeah. I'm, um, hold so my hand through this. Latte is a lot of steamed milk mm -hmm. and espresso. Okay. Um, and then a cappuccino is a little bit of steamed milk and an espresso. A cappuccino really? and a latte have the same amount of espresso in it. It's just the difference is what milk preference. Oh, uh, okay. Um, a cortado is a small shot glass with uh, the same amount of espresso in it as a cappuccino and a latte, but just very minimal steamed milk. Um, hmm. Yes, yes. And it's really good. It's actually supposed to be made room temperature um, and not hot, like a traditional coffee. Uh -huh. So you're actually supposed to throw it back like a shot. Oh, um, weird. It's sort of like a quick pick-me-up. Um, that's why there's not as much milk in it. That um, makes sense. Those are one of the hardest to make latte art on because you don't have enough room to do a layer. Right, they're just tiny. They're super tiny. Um, and then a macchiato is even smaller, about a little bit smaller than a cortado. Um, and it's still the same amount of espresso as a latte, um, but just significantly less um, steamed milk. And that's supposed to be served hot. So uh -huh. if you go to Starbucks and you want a caramel macchiato, all you're getting is just a caramel latte. Like, oh, macchiato. we see through your lies, Starbucks. We see through you, Starbucks. I'm still going <laughs> to order your stuff, but I see through it. That's right. So your I, your pie shop thing, cafe that you worked at, did you also use Starbucks' sizing lingo? Or were you like nope. small, medium, large? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, there was only, uh, we only offered one size. Like, oh. latte was only <laughs> one size. Um, cappuccino, if you get a tall, or if you get, what's it, uh, a grande or a venti cappuccino, you're just getting a latte. Ah. Um, like, traditional... Um, I guess Italian coffee, like, um, cappuccino is one size. That's it. Um, gotcha. same thing with macchiato. Um, I, I, I guess know. if you want more shots of espresso, that might change it. But traditionally, they're all, they're all one size. I didn't know any of this. It's, it's a magical experience when you're learning all this. Like, oh, I didn't know that. And so yeah. <laughs> next time you go to Starbucks and they're like, oh, do you want a caramel macchiato? You can be thinking to yourself going oh that's not really a macchiato but don't tell that to the baristas that's right they're, they're just trying to do their job they're working hard that's right i respect baristas because they do things that i cannot but i mm -hmm. also see through your lies but i also <laughs> see through your lies i respect you but i know you that's right that's right so uh how did you meet savannah um i instagram stalked her smart um, smart 
would not recommend very creepy <laughs> but i was looking through hashtags of pixie cuts because i was wanting to get my hair cut really short ah. and I needed some inspiration and i think i was browsing through the hashtags and i saw savannah's picture of her and her uh shadow scout trooper yep uh, outfit i was like oh that's the coolest thing ever <laughs> so i started following her and then um i I wasn't really using my Twitter until about my last year of college, and that's when I was starting to hit it pretty hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. And then I found out she was on Twitter, and so we uh, we started interacting through there. And then we started writing letters to each other, um, like real letters, good old, good old fashioned letters, like yeah, pen pals, mm -hmm. like what? keeping the postal service in business. You that's know? amazing. Yeah, it was great. Um, and then from there. We started, you know, text messaging, and then I met her finally at Star Wars Celebration Orlando, and yeah, right so on. we're really good friends now. Um, she's funny. She's the best. She's the best, and social media is actually good and not bad. Tell me about it. I've tricked her into being my friend. What a boob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now you're a co-host on a really cool podcast. I so know. It's the oh my god. She's so dumb. She she's, she's dumb. To, to bring she's me no on. I know, yeah. She's just driving the dorky Neva name through the mud <laughs> by bringing me on. <laughs> mm -hmm. She had so many listeners, and then when you started co hosting, it was ugh, oh, down just the down the drain. We just talk to each other now, pretty much. Like, nobody actually listens. <laughs> but it's just a conversation. And that's exactly. Okay. Exactly. Speaking of conversation, uh, you actually have the honor of being my first requested guest. Wow, Zowie. Yeah, look at that. Well done. Well done. You came highly <laughs> requested. Well. I know. I would be. I would be remiss to have you on and not talk about Chris Pine. Oh, so, God. what's your favorite Chris Pine? Uh, Princess Diaries two. Really. Forever. Yeah, that was my first Chris Pine experience. So, you know, sometimes the first time is the greatest time. Sure, when it comes to Chris Pine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you see Hell or High Water? I did, yes. Mother of God, that movie is great. That is incredible. It's I was blown away. It's probably my top ten favorite movies of all time. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I, 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 that was a movie that like I followed from production. And I was like, what is this movie? Chris Pine, Ben Foster, because I love Ben Foster, and oh, I love ben Jeff Bridges. Foster. Oh, my gosh, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. I kind of, like, have a crush on him. That's fair. But it's really strange because, you know, it's it's Jeff Bridges, but I support it's it. Jeff Bridges. Right, exactly. That is a reason enough to have a crush on him. I'm a dude. I don't play for the team, but I think about it. Mm -hmm. He's great. I don't blame you. Right? <laughs> I remember uh, seeing Hell or High Water. And while I was watching it, there's a scene where they go to the gas station and mm -hmm. Ben Foster uh, asked him for like a Dr. Pepper and he came back with a Mr. Pibb. Mm. And there's like yep. this whole great line when he's like, he's like, what did, what is this? He's like, they didn't have Dr. Pepper. He's like, Mr. Pibb, only assholes drink Mr. Pibb. <laughs> and as he said that, I was in the movie theater drinking Mr. Pibb because they didn't have Dr. Pepper. <laughs> like as so if on cue. you just set it down on the theater floor. Yeah, I just poured it out. <laughs> just right on the theater floor, like, ah, I'm an asshole. Yeah, 100%. I was like, you know what? The movie's called me out. I must conform. <laughs> I know what I've done wrong. That's right. That's I'm right. Exactly. I, can, I don't want to make him a liar. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, really it's really just c trying to make Ben Foster, who ended up being horrible in that movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, sticking, I'm sticking up for him. But, uh, yeah, Chris Pine's great. Chris Pine. He was great in Wonder Woman. Yeah. He was really great in Wonder Woman. I loved it. Same. And I loved him as uh, Kirk in Star Trek. Yes. Uh, I'm probably one of the select few that enjoyed J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. I love them. Um, you were not alone, I'm friend. I'm okay with that because I'm not, I'm not a Trekkie purist. Me neither. But I respect those that are because they're so intelligent and smart. Sure. And wonderful and beautiful. Sure. And I respect that. I, um, I'm into it. The movies. Yeah, yeah they're great. <laughs> The They're Star great. Warsy version of them. <laughs> I know, right? That's, that's probably why I like them so much. I'm like, oh, this reminds me of Star Wars. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, loved him in that, but definitely my first experience with Chris Pine will be my favorite, and that was with um, Princess Diaries too. Although I did like the guy that um, Mia Thermopolis was supposed to get married to. 
Andrew Jacoby. Or whatever yeah. His name is. I really liked him, but I was like, you know what? Oh, there's something about Chris Pine. I'll give him a shot. That's right. That needs to be your new Twitter bio. There's something about Chris Pine. There's something about Chris Pine. Be like, I wonder if I'm going to meet it. him one day and be like, hey. I, I recognized you in Princess Diaries, too. Right? All your he questions, really like, regardless of what movie he's promoting, just ask him Princess Diaries 2 questions. Oh, my gosh. I know <laughs> I'll do that. Like, so let's talk about Princess Diaries 2. Please uh, do it. That'd be amazing. But they're supposed to be making a third one. Really? Um, I think so. Hmm. And I'm wondering if that's going to be, like, maybe Chris Pine and then Hathaway, like, have a kid, and it's supposed to be about them. That would be interesting. That is the thing to do now. Yeah, that to is ha- the thing. To have, know. like, the next one be about the next generation. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. So how did you get into podcasting? Because um, you're on the I Imperial Senate podcast. <laughs> I don't know. You know? <laughs> um, I Well, I really have to credit Savannah because she let me guest on her show. I remember. Of, um, So I got to talk with her about her universe stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think that snowballed. Um, and I, I guess apparently I'm funny on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I can confirm. And, I don't know. And, and in person. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Credit so... where it's due. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Charlie and Nikki wanted me to like be a guest on their show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you yeah, know, I can't say no to that. Right. And then after that, that just, they kind of brought me on. And so it just kind of snowballed from there. I'm not really sure how, but right. I'm here now. There you and go. I'm, I'm taking, I'm kicking ass and taking names. Hell yeah. Same thing mm-hmm. happened with me and Savannah. Where I had her on this show and then we became, like, I didn't really know her beforehand. I just knew of her and I wanted to get to know her. So I had her on and we hit it off so well. Like you can hear us become best friends over the course of an hour and a half. That's and amazing. then she's like, I need to have you on my show sometime. And I was like, all right, cool. And then two shows later, she was like, you should be a co-host. I'm like, well, of course I'm going to ride your coattails into success. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, well, if you're going to be doing this, I'm going to go on board. Just exactly. To- Charlie's hilarious. So get, in, get in there, man. Get in there. I'm getting it. I'm getting yeah. it. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick. And uh, much like myself, you also recently got engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. It's fun. It's weird saying fiance. Tell me about it. It's so it's strange. Weird. How long did you and guys it, date? We dated for four years. It's a good amount. It's um, a good amount. Yeah, I think that's a perfect amount of time. It's yeah, I waited way longer than that. <laughs> how long? Have, how long were you guys dating? Uh, just shy of eight. Nothing wrong with that. That's what I, I said. Think, <laughs> I mean, I think the longer you date and get to know the person, the better chance at a good marriage you'll have. Yeah, for sure. And we've been living together for a couple of years as well. And oh I was yeah. Like, it was well, bound to happen. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. I, get, I like to um, say I gave her every out possible, and so I needed to lock I, it down before she wised up. I was the same way with Brant. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> any okay. moment now, That's just right. fine. I, I respect it. I love you, but if you want out, I am okay with that. I'm right. a weird person. I understand. I, I say the same thing. I was like, I'm really weird, and you're super hot. The math does not check out here. <laughs> I know exactly when I landed. When I landed him, I was like, "Are you sure?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you immediately like squint at him. Was, like, really weird. Because yeah. I, he has really nice calves. <laughs> he just—he was wearing shorts when I first met him. I was like, "Holy hell!" Yeah, exactly. Like, Those are some tennis balls you got in there. Well done. <laughs> Those are so beautiful. And so I just—I was so awkward about it. And he, uh, he remember, like, when he was telling me about it, when we started dating, he was like, "Yeah, I just was so weirded out by what you said." <laughs> I was like, "No." So wait, me you just walked up to him, and was like, "You know, your calves are on point, man." I wish I would have said that. Right. Um, <laughs> you just went we were actually, calves. Calves. <laughs> How did you? Where, where did you meet? Um, so we met at a friend's house. We were watching Breaking Bad. Oh, it was going wow. On. Full circle. And, yeah, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Everything always relates to Breaking Bad. It has to and in New Mexico. I know. It won't <laughs> leave me alone. It won't quit following me. <laughs> and, uh, so I saw him across the room. And I was like, holy hell, this guy's attractive. And so I sat next to him. I figured out a way to sit next to him. And, uh... Like, I think he introduced himself to me. I don't remember. All I remember <laughs> was, okay, I got to say something catchy. Something that'll stick with me, you know? Oh, oh boy. Make him think about me, you know? Oh, boy. 
keep in myself in his mind. Uh-oh. And so I was like, okay, he has his legs up on the table. And <laughs> this I is it. Go, this is it. This is my moment. <laughs> I can go to the bathroom, but say something as I walk by. Oh, know? God. <laughs> so Just a little, little something, something. <laughs> a little something, something. A little something spice up. I yeah. get up, and instead of asking him, hey, you know, would you mind moving your feet so I can go to the bathroom? Oh, boy. What I said was, as I'm stepping over to him, I said, I don't know how I'm going to get past these monstrous calves. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and he just gave me this weird look, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go pee. That and so, is gold. <laughs> yep. And I'm sitting in the bathroom like, I blew my shot. And, uh, I'm and I'm okay being alone because I deserve this. That's I right. I, I, I own this one. That, that's like, and I wish it was the only <laughs> I wish it was. Hey, whatever works, man. Yeah. You know, obviously, you knew your audience because, well, you're still there. Well done. I'm still there. Yeah. That is gold. He asked me to marry him. I was like, you sure do? Like, (laughs) he we're talking about, but okay. Man, well done. How did he propose? Um, So it was on our four year anniversary. Beautiful. Uh, We relived our first date. It was magical. (laughs) You're watching Breaking Bad at your friend's house? (laughs) <laughs> hey, let's relive that moment. Yeah. Let's re-go through that trauma for both of us. Of course. Um, but we went uh, to the first restaurant we went to on our date, and then we went to this downtown square area. That's where I live. Mm-hmm. Um, and we walked around, and we sort of talked about how we've grown together over these past four years, and, you know, yada, 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 all mm-hmm. that mushy, lovey shit. Sure. And then um, there was a big ass Christmas tree. Um, it was it would probably rival Rockefeller's Christmas tree for being what? honest. Um, yes. Texans do not mess around with Christmas. <laughs> or uh, size as, of any kind. <laughs> or the size. The bigger the better. That's right. Is true Texas motto. Yeah. And there was like a a wagon area, so we sat down there and then he uh, it was funny, he actually did a workout with his personal trainer like the day before. And it was leg day, so he was like, <laughs> he was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. But he got down on one knee and he asked me, he's like, Hey, do you want to, he like, do you want to marry me? I was like, Yeah, of course, duh. Yeah, duh. And oh, by the way, your calves look great. Did you work out in the last 48 hours? Just curious. Your, what are those tennis balls? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is yeah. great. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. And lock, locked it in. Locked that in, man. I am when with you, you there. Uh, did you set a date yet? Oh, work? no. No way. I feel like we, we dated for eight years, so I have another eight to set a date for a wedding, right? That's how that works, I think. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. support that. Yeah, you have to. I mean, there's no rush. <laughs> yeah. Also, weddings are hella expensive. Tell me about it. We're, like, talking about eloping. Let's just go somewhere cool and then go to a courthouse there or something. I've had, like, three or four friends tell me that. Like, they sent me messages and saying, just elope. Right? I mean, there's, like, throw a party when you get back. Yeah, yeah. You but, know. um, luckily, um... Or unluckily, I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. um, my parents really want to help with the wedding because they helped with my sister's wedding. Oh, that's cool. And uh, they didn't have like a big wedding for theirs, and they really wanted us to have it. Mm-hmm. So I respect that. Fair. So I can't elope. I'm between a rock and a hard place right now. Sure. So. Well, hey, it's going to be great. It's going to be, be great. great. Yeah. I mean, when you four years is a long, long time. Yeah, it is a long time, and but it goes by so fast. Tell me about it. I feel like, I feel like past four, like five is like it's five and then forever. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. at the point now where like we've been together so long that I'll be like, I remember one of the anniversaries we did this. I don't remember which one it was. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I, was like, I don't know. I've been together forever. Mm-hmm. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, it's something. I found someone to put up with me and locked it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I mean. It's it's really cool like experiencing that like somebody who is willing to put up with you, but For also real. like encourage you to be right? a better person. You're like, wow, I'm. If it weren't for you, I'd probably be walking around with no pants on right now. Right, absolutely in public. In no. public, yeah. But you have inspired me to wear pants. So That's right. You've inspired me to at least be sociable, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's a fun. It's a fun time. But uh, would you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? No, that's gone by fast. Right? It's pretty good, huh? That is pretty good. I like it. Me too. I, I kind of enjoy- like a, a Frasier type psychology thing. 
Right? Yeah, that's that's the cue. We just talk, and then I randomly look at the clock, and I'm like, oh, God, time. <laughs> but, yeah, I hope, I hope hope you had a good time. This has been really fun. Oh, yeah, it's been super fun. I've enjoyed it. But uh, I, I, I always have to end every podcast with uh, where can people find you online? Mm, mm. So I hit it pretty hot and heavy on Twitter. Yeah. Um, at Kristen K. Bates. Um, I also use Instagram religiously. Yep. At Kristen K. Bates. Um, and I have like an online portfolio, KristenKBates.com. But that's, you know, for professional stuff. But I yeah. have a bunch of stuff written there. Um. I've also written a few articles for 1138, so you can find me yes. on there. Um, also, I didn't realize we were recording this whole time, so that's pretty magical. Right? Wow. Suave. Yeah. Very suave. I try. I, I'm a bit, I'm a giant Chris Hardwick fan, mm-hmm. and I totally took uh, everything about my podcast format. I stole it from his podcast. I love it. That's my favorite thing about it is it's I, – I don't – like doing formal stuff because the mm-hmm. second you're like, oh, it's a formal interview, uh, they immediately button up and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. well, here we are. Here's and they my act answer. A more professional and like, oh, yeah, hello like, there. Yeah, and I'm not into that. I was like, I want to have a genuine human connection through conversation, and I that's like that. 100% like that. what my show is. It's like in mm-hmm. a in a weird way. Like I had Ryan Donahoe on, who was nice. uh, from the Force Cast, uh-huh. and he said that my show. I mean, he was very, he was really really nice. And he was talking about how my show is kind of a celebration of humanity in the sense that it is about people, just people telling their stories and getting to know people in a real sense. And uh, I like that. I'd never heard of my show described like that before, and since I've been telling everyone. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Thank been... you, Chris Hardwick, for That's right. introducing Brian to this. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for coming on. And thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a of pleasant course. experience. I'm really glad to hear that. So until next time. Until next time. Mm-hmm.